This podcast deals with themes, languages, and situations that may not be suitable for young audiences. If you're under the age of 18, parental guidance isn't going to help you here. And welcome to Now Open the Podcast, the sex education podcast that's more sex than education. I'm Trisha. I'm Jobim. And I am Kai. Hi, guys. Whoops. (laughs) Whoops. <laughs> we were so nervous for starting this episode. I love how we just completely gave away our guests mm-hmm. in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> but anyway. Good job on the suspense there. I know. Nice. I just I love building atmosphere, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but enough about me and my skills. Kai, how was your weekend? Super fun. I was at the beach and then... Um... We, I, I got on a boat, went to another beach, came back, and then scheduled or like planned this whole surprise thing for my girlfriend because it was her birthday. So super fun. Super fun. Very sweet. That's a very Kai thing to do. How do you people keep on, get, keep on getting to go to the beach? Like, how is this her? <laughs> I've been here. You, you, you've been to the beach more times this quarantine than I have in the past three years. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. Uh, maybe one day when we're when we're all just, out of this. I just want to feel the sun again. I just want to <laughs> what did How you was do your then? weekend? Not get any sun? Yeah. No. Um. It was a very lazy week for me. Um. We're we're, we're transferring stations from. Uh, we're we're transferring to a new building, so that we're, I'm not. I haven't been on the air this week. I'm not going to be on the air this week. So I'm just chilling. Nice. It's it's been fun <laughs> spending time at home <laughs> with a baby that is forever crying. Oh, doesn't stop crying. A churro baby. <laughs> Just zoom in on Jobim's yeah. face right there. Crying and shitting, but I, it's wonderful. It's wonderful crying and shitting. You have the a best really possible cute crying baby. and shitting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I spent most of my weekend trying to learn how to bike again. You know yeah, how that goes. The one thing they always say you you never forget, and yet here you I are. I forgot. I learned how to bike when I was younger, and I, I I didn't bike for a few years. I totally forgot how to do it. I think that's like well, we need to think the English language needs to come up with a better idiom then than right. It's like riding a bike because apparently it's not true. You forget. No, to be fair, it's like well, I was in the middle of learning how to ride a bike, so I never actually fully learned how okay. to ride a bike the first okay. time uh, three years ago or four years ago. And now uh, I just made my first successful turn. Yay! Congratulations! <laughs> I'm a 26 year old woman. Good job. And yeah. I made one successful turn. It's great. No, uh, I love it. Little I'm wins, dude. Let's man go. Who doesn't know how to ride a bike. Wait, I have an extra bike. You can learn with me. Absolutely not. Oh. No, I can barely walk on two feet. What makes you think I can balance on two just wheels? Just come earlier on Tuesdays and I'll teach you how to. Ridiculous. How's your week? Teach- oh, it's been good. That was it. That was, that was, it. That was mostly bike. the bike situation okay. that consumed my soul for a week. <laughs> uh, you guys didn't. I'm, I'm guessing you all didn't do the sex assignment last week, did you? No, no, I you didn't. Kai, you were supposed to be the one to do it mm-hmm. because no. you're the one who had never. Well, so for I wasn't able to do it. I'm so sorry. So for everyone's context who's listening to us for the first time, because I feel like we have a few new listeners tonight. Um, every week we have a sex assignment that really just encourages people to try new things, and, you know, discover stuff and see if they like it or not. So last week's sex assignment was. Kegels, do yep. the Kegels, and you guys didn't do it. I did it. Did you do it? Yeah. So doing the Kegels How was it? For a week like breathing to me. Your sex life. <laughs> That's terrifying. Yes. Sounds <laughs> no. like you could like crack a walnut down there. I've been doing it for a very long time, so it just felt like coming home. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Uh, yeah. I'm so disappointed in y'all's Kai. You absolutely have to do it this week and report back. I will it's submit the assignment later. I am so sorry. Okay. I'm a perfectionist. Gotta do you it. You have to right. talk about it on the coffee. <laughs> I will. I'll do that. 
Oh my All right. God. So um, before we get started with a really, really exciting episode, uh, we want to talk about some of the things that are happening in the real world. This mm -hmm. is a segment that we like to call the newsstand because the conversations that we have here uh, on the podcast don't ha happen in a vacuum. You know, there's real world implications to um, all the conversations we've been having. So, Jabim, do you want to get our yeah. first news bid in for tonight? Okay, so recently, uh, this comes two days after President Rodrigo Duterte ordered police and soldiers to kill communist insurgents in all encounters, all right? So uh, nine dead, six arrested in Calabarzon, cracked down on activists. Uh, two days after President Rodrigo Duterte told police and soldiers to kill and finish off communist rebels in encounters, the Philippine National Police, or PNP, and the Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, mounted a deadly crackdown in Calabarzon on Sunday, March 7th. As of 1 p.m. on Sunday, police and soldiers reported killing nine and arresting six individuals believed to be with the activist groups in Laguna, Rizal, and Batangas, provinces surrounding capital, regions, uh, capital region Metro Manila. Police said in their report that they were serving search warrants, but progressive groups described them as executions. Uh, according to those kill, uh, among those killed was Emmanuel Manny Asuncion, Secretary General of Bayan in Cavite, who is known who is a known mass organizer in the Southern Tagalog. Labor rights group Pamantik KMU also identified Chai Lemita Evangelista and Ariel Evangelista as fatalities in the operations. They are members of progressive group Ugnayan ng Mamamayan Laban sa Pagawasak ng Kalikasan at Kalupaan or Umalpaska. They were survived by a 10-year-old child. Mm. The operations were still ongoing as of 1.30 p.m. Calabarzon Police Spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Chitadel told Rappler in a phone interview. Um, so the Sunday crackdown is one of the biggest one-day offensives of the police and military against activist groups, many of which have been red-tagged by the Duterte administration. Yeah, and this really comes um, at the start of International Women's Month. And, mm. you know, I, at least two, I think, of those killed during Bloody Sunday were women. And as you can see, one of them was a mother. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's just quite obvious here that, like, the crackdown on activists, especially people who are you know, speaking up against the government, mm -hmm. um, they're cracking down really on a lot of people and especially women. Like this is just the latest in a spate of red taggings that have happened um, over the last several months. And actually, well, to be fair, years, it's been happening for Look, like- Look, I, I really don't know time. much about like the communist conflict here in the Philippines. But for as long as I can remember, communists in the Philippines have been talked about like boogeymen, you know, just people right. operating in the shadows, looking to overthrow the government. And yet, you know, you never hear in the news that there's going to be a communist insurgence. You know, you never yeah. hear about like a, a communist terrorist attack happening yeah. anywhere. Um, so and like, you know, it's seen, like, yeah, it's like we would put these people in the shadows. But if yeah. you look at history... Like a lot of the things we enjoy were because of these activists in the shadows. So like women being able to vote, for example, those women who fought for the for those rights were in the shadows. Women to for women to get an education, for women to be able, like in certain countries, to be even to to be able to get like to hold a book, for example, were put in the shadows. And it's like, you know, it's just it's such an interesting, like just not interesting. Well, yeah, interesting. It's an interesting way of going about things, how the people who are fighting for literally everyone, mm -hmm. like any anyone who, like just, just to have an equitable, equal type of footing with people in power, you mm -hmm. know, they're the ones who are vilified. And, you can, and, and that just brings us to the point that like people in power are the ones who control how media will portray these people. Mm -hmm. And that really I mean, does call for better representation of people in of these kind of people in media, of activists the red, in media. The red tagging has kind of just been used by the government as a sort of smokescreen to persecute whoever they want, really, without uh, with very little um, evidence. It's just because you call somebody a cop, it's, it's, it's kind of like what uh, Trumbo suffered in the 1950s, you know, that uh, that embargo on people who they thought were communists in Hollywood. Yeah. Just people, people just being straight up red tagged and being... Uh, uh, blacklisted in hollywood it's like that it's here not, except yeah. instead of being blacklisted you die it's yeah, like it's a I, witch hunt it's fucking yeah. sorry but like you know it's so yeah. it's so medieval 
how it is like, appropriate you know? the term witch hunt because again like i said earlier a lot of these uh so many of them are are women um like i'm uh, no matter what you think about her um lenny is like probably the most public female political figure as the vice president and um you know duterte is constantly um diminishing her especially because of her status as a woman you know um they're ta mm -hmm. they're targeting the gabriela party list as well mm -hmm. um because they are speaking up against the atrocities uh mm -hmm. and calling him a sexist misogynist yeah because you said that thing terrorist. about how like women can't be <laughs> women can't be president uh, president because yeah. of the, the period the yeah because like periods. yeah but you know you look at him and you're like you are nowhere yeah he's not near stable. the mental capacity yeah. <laughs> required to be president health, bro. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so unfortunately, this has happened. Um, but there are some investigations, at least ongoing. You know, it's still being done by the DOJ. So we'll see what's going to happen with that. Um, I do know as well that the judge who issued the warrants, they call him like a warrant factory. I think he's a professor in Ateneo. Uh -huh. um, they're also investigating that as well to kind of like crack down on the whole um, process or practice of being a warrant factory because like it was literally just mm -hmm. copy paste and it was like the same everything mm -hmm. um and it's like is this justice if you can just sign warrants on mass like that right mm -hmm. so at least there are some investigations but you know keep keep your eyes peeled and um stay loud stay stay aware and speak up when when something is off Yes. Because a lot of things are off all the time. Evil wins when good people <laughs> stand by and do nothing. So, yeah. yes. Mm. So, all right. So, I guess that is it for tonight's newsstand. Um, oh, God. How do we <laughs> go on from that to everything else? Oh, somebody says, uh, saying good evening to everybody who is uh, tuned in, by, who is hanging out with us tonight. Um, Maki, uh, is she Monic? I think that's other Trisha. Right? Yes, yeah. other Trisha. Um, Essa is also here. And Nick says, uh, that Nick did the Kegel the past week, and by the gods, it really affected my last orgasm. Great, good job. I'm I'm glad that uh, that we gave you good orgasms. That sounded so wrong. <laughs> we're glad that we <laughs> were able to help in giving you better orgasms, Nick. Nice. Yes. So last week on the show, we were talking all about periods, mm -hmm. and we were very very proud to partner up with Sinaya Cup for that particular episode. And we did a little giveaway raffle on social media very recently. And we just want to congratulate the winner of a brand new, well, I hope so, Sinaya Cup, <laughs> your very own uh, zero waste menstrual product. I want to congratulate <gasps> Krynes from Twitter. So uh, don't worry if you're not watching tonight, we're going to message you anyway um, on how you can pick up your Senaya cup. Uh, there. So that was from last week's giveaway. If you like the content that we do, if you want to support the podcast, um, we would really appreciate it because... Yeah, you, know, you, can, uh, you can do it through our coffee, I think. Yeah, uh, you can do it yeah. through our coffee. So if you'd like to support us, you can go to coffee.com slash nowopenph. Drop us a line, drop us a message. Uh, and again, every little bit helps to mm -hmm. help keep the podcast running. This is, we're basically digital buskers. You know, we're just standing <laughs> on, on a, on a <laughs> virtual street corner, talking about sex and leaving a, an empty guitar case out there in front of you. And all you gotta do is go to our coffee. That's our coffee. The, the virtual <laughs> guitar case. Just throw drop a, a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Throw yeah. 20 bucks yeah. in there. Cause it's like a, it's, it's supposedly like the, the, the price of a cup of coffee. Yes. Right. So mm -hmm. just, uh. Just don't have coffee tomorrow. Give it to us. Give the money to us. <laughs> You'll survive one day without caffeine. Yeah, we take caffeine. We don't need it. It's a, it's a drug. Drugs and, are bad. And it'll make us really, really happy because we really love what we do here and we yeah. want to keep doing it and, and do more things that you enjoy and want to learn about. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the part of the podcast where we like to promote fellow creators and artists who are making some amazing stuff that we, we honestly, truly love. So. Other Virtual buskers. Yeah, other virtual buskers. And I think um, this, we have a clip here. We have a clip here from a new song by a wonderful, a wonderful person who needs no introduction. I'm sure many of y'all are here to see her. So we got a clip of Big Shot by Coates. Oh, why did you get so shy? But last you were so bold. Well, you told me she'd 
That was awesome. Nice. That was I great. Love it. Right? I love it. I love that was that your that first video. time hearing it, my, wasn't it, Jabim? Well, my first time hearing that long. <laughs> <laughs> I heard like maybe 30 seconds of it earlier. It was all, already pretty funky and jangly. I, I like it. Awesome. So if you like that, you can stream that on Spotify. That's Big Shot by Coats. But you know what? Enough of all the fancy intro things we like to do on the show because I really want to get into what we're talking about tonight. So during last week's newsstand, we talked a little bit about how actress Natalie Hart came under fire for her comments about her portrayal of a lesbian character or a lesbian, uh, a real person um, who identifies as lesbian in Maala Ala Mo Kaya. Uh, so this brought up an age old conversation about how queer narratives are becoming more and more mainstream with even major local networks showcasing more queer stories. But even like, you know, despite the fact that there are more queer stories now on cable and local television um, and everywhere else, um, are these stories being told properly? And are they being told by the people who should tell them and who can take care of these stories? So last year we saw the explosion of boys love as a genre. So it's a genre of romance story that originated in, in Thailand. You know, two leads um, are men. And I was, I was talking to you earlier, a really common storyline there is that it's usually two men, they fall in love. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of this BL in Thailand. And it made its way over to the Philippines and to other Asian countries, and it just exploded. And that resulted in like a million BL shows and, and related series Naturally. in the last year. Yeah. And they've become really popular, especially now in COVID, you know. It's a um, new trend. Yeah, it's a new yeah. thing, and it's it's it's, 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 it's ex extremely online. <laughs> and I mean, with any new trend, there's going to be people that are doing it purely to get to get in on it and make some money and exploit mm -hmm. the trend. And then there's people who are in it because they believe in the movement, right? Yeah, and they're like, now is the time. Strike while the iron is hot. And right. I guess here tonight to help us parse and separate and discern which is which. Yes. Uh, we have a few special guests. Yes, yeah, so I'm really, really happy to introduce our first special guest. We have a musician, theater actress, and star of the Game Boys Girls Love spinoff series, Pearl Next Door. Everyone give a now open welcome to Rachel Coates. Woohoo! Hey! Hi, Rachel! Only two hey, Rach! What's going oh, on, go. guys? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, unmuted I'm, myself. <laughs> this is my first loud raccuous introduction I'm like ah! and then i was like oh i'm muted i'm sorry about that i know but it's like, <laughs> all right pretend we just got you in <laughs> Rachel what's going on Jabim? Jabim, Jabim. <laughs> <laughs> well we also have a really another really special guest tonight spoken word poet actor writer and the creator of gaia sa Pericula. everyone welcome juan miguel severo hello Hi everyone! Yes, I will really have a sound machine. Yeah, we'll have a soundboard here. <laughs> I'm really excited to have you on because I could not think of two better people to ask for this. Yes, oh, I'm excited to be here because si Rachel, sa mga nanonood sa ano, para Rachel and Trisha na ko sila ng dial sa spoken word like six years ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my Back God. In the day. Remember that? <laughs> good times. That was good time. quite a time. Mm. Yeah, so uh, tonight uh, we just really want to talk and like learn from you guys about, you know, how you are as artists and creators, like navigating this new landscape of there's just so much new media coming out uh, for queer narratives. And I, I want to learn more about uh, why you wanted to enter into that space, why, why you wanted to start creating queer art. So... Why do you tell queer stories? Like, what drew you to queer narratives when you first started creating art? Wow. Who should start first? <laughs> um, well, because it's about 
my life. <laughs> well, no, no, kasi, di ba, as artists, parang, for example, uh, sige, dahil nasabi ko naman kanina na we started, uh, we met each other sa spoken word, tayong tatlo. Parang, um, usually, before, before I became political with my writing, with my poems, I used to write personal stuff. And I'm a queer person, so of course, ang ang hirap ng ang hirap i divorce nung sining nung my I, nung sining ko from my identity, right? And I remember this distinctly because I used to write in English. I used to write in English, and then I discovered that I was bisexual and then eventually gay. Tapos so nung nagsusulat ako in English, tapos hindi pa ako ready na mag come out. Ang nangyayari ay, number one, first, parang I straight wash my poetry. Like, I use the she, her, ano. <laughs> Kapag right. third person ako, parang when I address the beloved, parang laging she, her, etc. So, nung uh, I was slowly coming to terms to my, uh, with my sexuality, ay naging naka-second person na yung mga poems ko bigla. Para hindi ko na kaila, para eh, Because I was not ready to come out yet, and and uh, I was not ready to come out yet, but I didn't want to straight wash my poems. So I started writing in the second person. Para you na ako ng you parate. And then, no, finally, uh, no, finally, parang na, na, when I started writing in Filipino, I realized ko na in Filipino that wouldn't be a problem because our pronouns are genderless are gender neutral. Yeah. Right? So, di ba, yung siya, yung kanya, lahat sila genderless. So, so nag-decide ako na magsulat ako sa Filipino instead. Medyo, uh, so, so, medyo ganun din yung nangyari sa akin in terms of writing fiction na I used to write stories about, you know, heterosexual couples because I write mostly love stories and I used to write stories about heterosexual people but then I realized ko na na yung pinanggagalingan ng stories na sinusulat ko um, ay marami sa kanila ay nanggaling from my queer experience so bakit hindi ako magsulat ng experience ng isang actual queer person instead and and when when uh, when Boys Love exploded because of because of Together the series last year this time last year actually one year na siya uh, when together the series from the, that series from Thailand exploded here in the Philippines, I discovered and no, I realized that um, this is the perfect time to strike. There is a market for it. And correct ko lang kanina, Trisha, actually, uh, Boys Love, ano, galing pa siya sa Japan, sa Yaoi. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Yeah, so 1970s pa lang. And um, what's interesting about it is because uh, women wrote, the, uh, women invented the genre for women, right? And and it's good. Uh, yung interesting sa kanya is it's a little it's subversive in the sense that sa, si, sa, by when women started writing these stories, men themselves became the victim of patriarchy, and be, um, men themselves became the victims of toxic masculinity. So, but then um, eventually, as it as the genre grew, what happened was uh, hindi sinasadya but the women who invented it started speaking over another minority right which is yung queer people and so and even in thailand most of their series yung mga ina-adapt nila na series ay ay authored by female writers um and ang interesting na ginawa ng pilipinas i can say is that um sa pilipinas ang bl ay ginagawa mostly ng queer people and Yun yung magandang, uh, yun yung magandang revision na ginawa natin dun sa genre, I can say that. Ayun. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's incredible. Because, oh yeah, I, when you said Japan, I was remembering um, Yaoi. Yaoi. Right? Yeah, no, that's Yaoi. Right. This, Yaoi. Yeah, that's where it started. Uh, I, I think you said it's so American-like. Christian <laughs> Yaoi Amon and Sean and I. Yes. Did a, did a special on it where uh, she was talking about the girls who read Boys Love Literature. And for them, it was a way of experiencing romance without having to have their own proxy in the story because they were mm -hmm. embarrassed to feel uh, romantic feelings. Mm -hmm. So it was a way to, to enjoy a, a romance story without, you know, 
them having to be a part of it. So it wasn't embarrassing for them. Oh, that's really interesting. Wow. Um, before we go on to Rachel, someone just wants to say, um, pakisabi kay Rachel, mahal na mahal ko siya. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Arian. Um, a blush. I w- all I could do is blush. That's the problem, dude. Thank you. Well, yeah, why don't you tell us what drew you um, to wanting to act in queer narratives and I guess especially what drew you to Pearl Next Door specifically as a script? Oh my gosh, well, I'm not, it's not going to be as scholarly of an answer as um, as Gaga's answer. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. But uh, personally, I mean, uh, early in my career as an actress, uh, I was doing a lot of stage stuff back in the day. Um, I'd always get the same comment from all my directors, uh, and that was that I was not uh, as feminine as I could be in my movements because I'd always get casted like what? She's a 16, 17 year old girl. She's going to get casted as an ingenue. So it's like, you know, I was there, I was supposed to be the love interest of this guy, and every time I'd sit, my <laughs> my movements would all be so masculine that it would be like, where do we even place you? Like, what's going on? And I realized that that was more of a, you know, uh, choosing or, act, I mean, it wasn't an actively seeking out of, of these roles, but they started to come to me when I reached, uh, what was like, maybe 21 or 22. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. I feel comfortable. Uh, portraying these characters and their stories are very obviously near and dear to my heart. Um, but yeah, I think um, every role stems from a certain point of truth and uh, my sexuality has always been a crazy giant part uh, of, uh, of a truth in my life that I'm uh, living out now and still discovering how to live out in, in, in its best way. And it's a great two-way feeding relationship between me and acting and, and portraying these roles, which is why I always pursue them because um, they affirm who I am and I affirm what they are uh, in the most respectful way possible. So, uh, and also back in 1972, no, I'm just joking, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's basically it. I mean, it resonates very, very, uh, very deeply with me. And um, these stories are so close to my heart because you guys are my friends and uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think what really gets me about like the reasons why you do uh, or why you portray like these queer stories is really like how you grew into a more authentic self with the art yeah. that you do. Exactly, like, that's it. Exactly. Right. Like with Gege, it was more like he. Uh, or, are your pronouns he? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. With Gege, he um, he went from 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 calling his love interest she to becoming more and more authentic with himself and his work. The same way Rachel would kind of get into this, get into more like the roles that really portrayed her more. Um, in that sense, so you grew into the sense of authenticity, like growing, in terms of growing, you know, like what kind of queer stories did you grow up with? And like, what were the stories that you disliked? And what are the stories that really inspired you? Hmm. Ako ba muna? Sige, muna. go. <laughs> okay. Meron ang, mer- there's one TV moment that's, uh, that I will forever remember. It's between Patrick Garcia. It's Patrick Garcia. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick Come on. Garcia. Ha? Huh? No introduction. Like, Love that. Gay people my age thought they wanted to look like Patrick Garcia. But later on, they realized that they actually wanted him. So, right? Uh, and there's uh, and in Tabing Ilog, Tabing Ilog, this youth-oriented show in the in the in the early two thousands. Tabing Ilog, because it does on screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, uh, but uh, eventually, Tabing Ilog did uh, uh became a more superior show in my opinion <laughs> by the way <laughs> no, no, no. I, I love to be sorry i love to be elog because because we rarely see how the youth are in the in the provinces it's mm. always slugging sa manila so anyway mm. um, there's this scene in tabing elog wherein gerard madrid this uh, ac- uh, an actor na wala na ngayon so Gerard Madrid kissed Patrick Garcia all of a sudden. And as a, as a boy na parang who thought na 
gusto ko lang maging kamukha si Patrick Garcia. <laughs> Nung kinhinalikan ni Gerard Madrid, si Patrick Garcia, naingit ako. Yeah. Naingit ako. So, parang, so, that moment, parang, oh, ano yun? Ano, ano itong nararamdaman ko? What is this feeling? I just can't explain. <laughs> so, y- yun yung isa sa mga first queer moments on television that na, that stayed with me. So, pero, uh, interestingly, so this was early early 2000s, ha? Early 2000s yung tabing ilog. Interestingly, as the, year, as the years went by, biglang nawala na uli yung mga kiss ng lalawang lalaki. Even Paolo Contis and, and Patrick Garcia kiss sa tabing ilog, by the way. Tas, uh, I mean, tas kebs lang. Pero eventually, um, unti-unti, ay hindi, bigla na lang na nawala yung mga, ano, nawala yung mga kissing scenes. So parang big, dun, may, alam mo yun, merong gulat factor na, ha, huh, parang, so masama na siya ulit. Or, kasi parang people were angry at the time na parang ba't nangyari yun. And then eventually, pinagbawal na siya hanggang sa, uh, um, all, uh, at the tail end of the 2000s, bawal na ulit maghali ka ng dalawang lalaki. And even during Glee, lahat yeah. ng kiss ni Blaine at saka ni Kurt ay tinatanggal sa star movies at saka sa ETC. Pero yeah, sa akin yun, tabing ilog. Sorry, ang dami ko sinabi. Pero tabing ilog, and then, uh, pero this, the, the TV series truly changed my life and, you know, uh, reaffirmed my queerness and uh, told me na I am valid, etc. I queer as folk. Yeah. Okay. Showtime Spears. Uh, guys, please, if you can get your hands on it, please, palagay naman siya sa Netflix Showtime. But yeah, Queer as Folk. Uh, Rachel, uh, what are some of the stories that you grew up with and loved? Uh, I'll start with the one that I hated. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> because when you we were, we were little, um, like, um, I didn't even, I uh, grew up really religious, so uh, we, we didn't even know what, what a lesbian was, if you know what I'm saying look some secret stuff right over there so we didn't even know what they were yeah. we were like what's that I'm like, learning I don't things even, tonight. I'm, not, I'm not familiar with the term but uh what happened was uh we were watching my mom used to love csi that was her show dude that was oh her my show. god yeah. <laughs> that was, was her show that was, was her show too. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens is like sometimes we'd, we'd stay in her room and like watch csi and i remember that they were looking for this guy they were looking for this guy, he's missing, but his wife is like so suspicious uh, looking. She's so, so, she's like, oh, I don't know where my husband is. Like, why are you even asking? And she has like a car binder. She has a car binder here. And I'm like, oh, we already know where this is going. But um, <laughs> basically, basically, um, the, the next scene, they were, she was in the pool. She was swimming around, you know, being all hot and sexy and stuff. And then someone swims up to her, it's another woman. And then she's like, she's like, Oh, uh, oh, will they ever find out like what happened to your husband? She was like, nobody needs to know. We're gonna be together now. And I was on the side, I was like, oh my God. And then my mom was in bed and she was like, you know how it is. You know, all these associations, you know, it's just, it's just yeah. like, um, uh, I feel like a representation like that, you know, you watch that when you're 12 and it's automatic association. You're like, okay, well, you gay, you're obviously either sex addicted, a serial an killer, or <laughs> an actual murderer, or like mm-hmm. something like that. I know it's, it's, it's crazy, sexy, but, but like it does happen. As- exactly. That's very true. Exactly. That's very true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it was crazy to watch at the time, but then, um, uh, I remember uh, one time I was watching HBO. I think it was HBO or something. And then my favorite movie to this day of all time came on, which is The Birdcage. Uh, mm-hmm. I know it's it's like it which, is which a drama. Which version invasion. of The Birdcage? Wait, uh, celebrating the, its something anniversary the, this year. Yes, Robin that's Williams right. Version? That's right. The Robin Williams version. I thought. Yeah, okay, okay, I know it's a hot take. It was the nineties. It was. It was Robin like, Williams, <laughs> Nathan Lane. It was not the best, later, yeah. not the best representation. All in all, I mean, we have Hank Azaria yeah. inside, like being a very, he's he is who he is. But when I saw that relationship on the screen, I was like, yo, that's something else, you know, like that's real love. And even I remember watching that, uh, which is still my favorite movie of all time, like uh, two or three years back in bed because I watch it all the time. And it came on the screen, and my mom was looking at the screen. And she was like. They're really in love, no? And I was like, yes! 
<laughs> yes, they are. Man. Come on, they're in love, dude. And uh, yeah, it's just like it's, it's just a thing where it's just like they were not perfect as a couple, and I it, that's another pet peeve of mine. You can see all these perfect gay pu- couples walking around like on the on the screen. Sometimes it's either it's either like they're terrible or they're like hyper, you know, perfect, and they they never fight, yeah. and they're like yeah. But uh, they were uh, so incredibly flawed, but such great parents and so full of love. And I just think that's a great uh, piece of media that should be watched over and over again. Guys, watch Birdcage. I love that movie. <laughs> Wait, lang. Dahil sinabi ni Rachel kanina yung lesbian. Dahil sinabi niyo kanina yung lesbian. Parang, I just remembered, um, I just realized na, yeah, ang earliest, isa sa mga earliest exposures ko sa queer narratives without mm-hmm. saying the words, uh, without branding themselves as queer, ay anime talaga. Like, card captor Sakura. Tomoyo oh, yeah. is in love with Sakura. Oh my God. That's truly, canon. Dude. Okay? Truly, truly. Tomoyo yeah, is in love with Sakura. <laughs> and then, uh, and uh, Lisha Uran is bisexual. And true, Toya true. and Toya and uh, la 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 and Yukito are a thing, canon. Also, <laughs> interesting, because I, uh, probably, isa sa mga sexual awakening ko ay Fushigi Yugi. So, Tamahome, Tamahome can wreck me anytime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And there's this, one of, uh, one of Miyakas, the lead characters, uh, Gorgons there, is uh, a femme Bata dito, I feel like may transness dun, may, uh, hindi, hindi ko ka na maalala how the character identifies it. Pero si Noriko kasi, uh, dresses as a woman. Tapos right, she, right. ah, sige, she nga. Kasi she, she said na gusto niya uh, people, for people to actually see her as a woman. Pero Ooh. that doesn't mean na hindi niya mahal si Miyaka, yung babae. Oh. So parang, mm-hmm. oh, oh, oh my God, so a lesbian trans woman. So you first lesbian trans woman na nakita ko in my life. And Vibe. I didn't even have the words for it. It's so I interesting that like you bring up anime. Ranma one half. You know what? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Say, oh my God, that was both like a sexuality awakening and a sexual awakening yeah. in a way. This man has boobs now. <laughs> I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> I'm like three, I'm like, I don't know, five years old. And I'm like, hmm, this is... This is new. <laughs> this is new information. <laughs> this is new. <laughs> you guys talked about um, the stories that you love, but are are there um, what are the queer stories that make you roll your eyes, that make you kind of cringe or feel off, off the bad top about of your head? Yeah. What are the ones yourself. that you saw that just you were like, as storytellers, I'm never going to I'm never going to fall under that you know that category. I'm never going to make that mistake. Yeah. Oh um, my. <clears throat> Uh, hindi, siya, hindi, ako, hindi na ako bata when it came out. Pero still, a, yeah, I was young enough naman, I believe. But there's this, yeah, there, there's this show uh, in GMA7 called, there was this show called The Rich Man's Daughter. Oh, yeah. It oh. starred Rian Ramos and Gliza De Castro. And there's this gay character, there was this gay character, um, I believe it was played by Mike Tan. But mm-hmm. anyway, um, around the end of the, the show, the gay character died. And, oh. and Glidel Mercado, who played the mother, was crying. And she was saying na parang, mas gusto kong magkaroon ng anak na bakla kesa ng anak na patay. Umiiyak siya. Tapos, Damn. yeah, so it was heartbreaking. At first parang, umiyak nakakaiyak din siya naiyak din ako and then na realize ko bigla ha huh. so bakit yung tanging gay character doon sa show had to be killed off to teach these straight people a lesson i don't want that <laughs> they're a device yeah our yeah. lives and our deaths have always been a kind of teaching moment. Our homophobia yeah, exactly. is cured I hate it. because this gay person is dead now. <laughs> yeah, this gay no person is dead now, it. but yeah. he taught me to be a better mom. So I <laughs> guess. Oh, yikes. Yeah, yeah. I no longer uh, have a kid, but now I know how to be a better mom. No. <laughs> uh, yikes. Uh, did they even show the kiss um, between Gliza and Rianne? No, I, I believe they did not. 
Eh, even uh, in my husband's lover, so my husband's lover, they shot uh, uh, Paul Santa Ana, who wrote it, uh, was a friend of mine. And, uh, is a friend of mine, sorry. But ako na kawas. Like, dito, si, ano, si, si, the, so they shot a kiss between Dennis Trillo and, and Tom Rodriguez, the, the, the actors, the leads. Pero hindi siya pinalabas kasi hindi siya papayagan ng MTRCD. Mm. Oof. Yeah, but they have no. But when when I know when when the guy when Tom Rodriguez was being hazed into straightness during you know for the latter part of the show, they have no problem showing that. Oh shoot! You can beat up this gay man, but you can't show show them kissing. Yes. What I'm getting is that there's sort of a, a battle uh, between the people who want to tell these stories and the people who, let's say, pay to get these stories made or distribute these stories. Do you yeah. do you feel that there's there's sort of a, a a push and pull between the people who want to make the stories and the people who want to make money off of them? Definitely. Ooh. Definitely. And also, oh my um, gosh. Because the and we we are in a very Catholic country and yes, the yeah. C- even, even the CBCP supposedly has a say sa kung anong ipapalabas and you know there's even Catholic mass media awards na sinusubukan ma- masungkit ng mga ng mga station and because it's supposed to be prestigious and yung MTRCB mismo ay may skewed uh, notion ng kung ano ang uh, uh, parang what's appropriate for for prime time consumption True, Kasi, again, true. parang, di ba, ilang tao na ang napatay at namatay sa ang probinsyano, for example, but one, <laughs> just one kiss. Parang, they have no problem seeing male-to-male violence, but they have a problem with male-to-male love. And that says like a lot about that, our society. That the two men true. kissing is more morally corrupt than murdering somebody. Like, we cannot yeah. show children yeah, love yeah. between two consenting yeah. adults, but we can yeah. show them murdering each other. Murder, fine. And then the blood splatters all over the place. Our police do that. Every, like, you know, that's fine. We need to desensitize them to the murder. But yeah, basically. the men yeah. kissing, no, 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 no. <laughs> we can't have people happy <laughs> and in love. But, like, Jesus. that really takes me to now where with the rise of online streaming platforms, you know, YouTube, um and and because of covid um a lot of people are home on the internet and now there's like really new avenues for people to tell stories that aren't limited to just cable tv anymore you know or radio shows like you can if you still of course have capital or something you know you can still make uh stories that you want to see so last year we saw the blgl explosion right. largely because of like streaming platforms mm-hmm. you know they get they get put up on netflix mm-hmm. it shares um thai japanese stories here right um and it, we just can't get enough of it so mm-hmm. with that um since now you're like online uh, i know that gaya si pelicola first streamed online pearl next door was streaming on youtube um so how did that kind of change how you had to you could approach these stories mm-hmm. Like what? Did, what could you change now? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm a comm major, <laughs> so uh, it was it was interesting watching it from a communications major's perspective because I mean, uh, obviously my background is theater and uh, and spoken word, right? So this was my very first series, period, which was pretty awesome. Uh, but also because uh, I was taken aback, and I mean taken aback by the amount of uh, input that comes in from, it's a two-way thing, you know? Uh, uh, for me, uh, the, uh, when you do a stage production, for example, it's you do the production and you go home and eat leftover spaghetti and then that's it. You know, you don't really stay until uh, afterwards to, to speak about the, um, the show in the vestibule or you don't, you don't expect to see uh, anything online about it other than a review, maybe two or three reviews from like a, a publication. But uh, with, um, and I'm sure with GSP as well, my gosh, uh, there's so much input from the fans that it feels like we're all telling the story together. Like it doesn't yeah. feel like it's a, it's a one way street anymore. Um, mm. You know, one thing I discovered is all these reaction videos that come out after each episode is aired. And people really say, you know, that's that's messed up. 
that's what should be done. You know, this is this is the this is what this main character should do because that's what I would do. And it's like, whoa, this is. Um, I never felt like I was telling uh, so many people's stories at the same time, and it's both a terrifying feeling and uh, it make it makes me feel very honored as well. Um, but yeah, I think that it's just like this the biggest. Um, manifestation of the gay narrative it's like we're all telling the story so it's like yeah it's wild uh yeah that's the shift to online how what it's meant for me uh personally so oh how about you Gaga? um so you don't measure same k rachel as in it means a lot to me uh it, because community building jeff yung naging yung naging effect nyo sa akin tag dito Wait lang. I Pa-review nga ng question. Maglaga ko ako. Same. 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 Yeah, so <laughs> like, <laughs> like now you're, you're producing stories and you're creating art uh, kind of outside the Philippine mainstream media. So I guess it's more like, yeah, how did... How Ayun. did you approach it differently and how did that impact the, the creating process? Ayun, uh, sobrang gaan niya dahil alam kong walang habol sa amin ng MTRCD. Wow. <laughs> so I like alam, to hear. Alam kong walang habol sa, 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 ano, sa platform natin, ang MTRCD. So mas nakahinga ako ng maluwag. Kaya rin hindi ko siya nakikita for ano for uh, for uh, for free television yung gaya sa pelikula because I knew na um, that would mean ay na kailangan kong isakripisyo yung gusto kong ikwento. So and because of that na nasa ano siya na nasa social media siya um ay mas ano mas mas uh, ang daming ring platforms for discussion na meron merong Merong PND and merong PND Game Boys and 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 guys sa pelikula thread sa Reddit. Tapos discussions happen even sa sa YouTube sa sa mismong YouTube accounts namin sa mga comments sa comment threads like um they talk about yung kung ano anong mga queer issues or issues of the queer community yung natatakal ng mga episodes they talk about that sa comment threads and again yung sa Gaya na sinabi ni Rachel kanina, sobrang iba yung feeling, iba sa akin yung, iba yung importansya sa akin ng, ng, ng mga naggumagawa ng YouTube reaction videos. Because for me, it is the, it is the social media equivalent of peeking from the backstage to see how your audience is reacting. And, yeah. Yeah, or sneaking into the cinema while your movie is playing. So that's, that's a social media uh, counterpart of that for me. So that's very important sa akin. Kasi, um, as creators, we become more aware of how our work is impacting other people. And, and, and dahil, uh, because accessible yung, and because uh, the discussions are so accessible, if they're, if you're, for example, if, if, if my advocacy, if my activism needs sharpening, <laughs> mas mabilis ko siyang ma-address. Or what the, what the series, what the show fails to do, the discussion after can, can, uh, can compensate with. Mm -hmm. Right? So uh, that, yeah. that's why important sa amin for the team sa amin na uh, that we stay online afterwards and we have these Banlao sessions after each episode. But um, um it's not really to spoon feed the audience what we want to what about the story that we want to tell, but more of parang uh, hand holding kumbaga. May hand holding with the audience to lead them dun sa mga conversation some points of conversation that they, that we actually want to shed light to. So a lot of these stories are uh, being shared now, a lot of them are being made now because people are realizing that there's a big audience for it. And because of that, there's a lot of money to be made. And because there's a lot of money to be made, not all of these stories are being told responsibly. And uh, mm -hmm. what we're seeing a lot of the time is that um, exposure without fair representation is little more than exploitation. So as creators, how do we ensure that the stories we tell are, uh, 
are not exploitative, uh, that they're inclusive, that they're that they're telling the right story. I guess like if you want to start by answering how um, you feel that like especially mainstream media is approaching this, you know. So what are they doing wrong? Yeah. Yeah. And what can we do to make it right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess no, we got this. We like, got this. No, 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 no. Like, yeah, how mainstream media, like what kind of recent um, productions mm -hmm. have kind of fallen short. Miss the mark. And how do we correct that? I'm not going to call them? anybody out, dude. Yeah, I, hmm. I call. Uh, the, international. Uh, we can do international stuff. <laughs> no, no they, they're, a lot of them are doing better than us. Just kidding. really. Um, no, 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 no. To be fair, uh, when it comes to BL, I think we're doing the most. Uh, and why do you think that is? We represent. No, actually, there's a there's a company in Thailand, pala, that's doing a lot. Then, uh, yung nadaw. Ano? Um. And dami natin queer creatives. Like, honestly, it's it's mind-boggling how it took us this long to tell queer stories like this. Because for the longest time, queer writers have been writing queer stories. And, you know, even our most, no our, our, le our legendary directors mostly are queer people and, and, and women. So, sabi, uh, sa very matriarchal ang, ang, ang Philippine cinema kumpara sa, kumpara sa Hollywood, kumpara sa, sa cinema ng ibang mga bansa. And, and it's, it only makes sense that na mayroong ganitong classing surge of, B, of BL right now in the Philippines because ang dami-dami nating queer writers. And... And you, these queer writers have been telling straight stories for too long. And when people say that oh, they're just, uh, they're just jumping in on the bandwagon, I feel bad because no, I believe that they are making up for lost time because for a, because for so long they've been writing queer, uh, straight stories. Mm -hmm. And you know why? Uh, you know why a lot of parang and daming mga dialogue. Na, na spoken by female actors ang iconic sa mga bakla because mga bakla ang nagsulat these women these iconic women na 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 na, uh, na tag dito yung para kang chewing gum na masarap mo yan or or mas excited pa ako magparut kanal kaysa makita ka mga ganong linya na mga iconic sa teleserye were written by gay men were written by queer people so kaya yung queer, pe queer people have identified dito sa mga iconic female characters nito dahil they speak their language. Dahil yung mga queer writers ay pinahiram nila yung bosses nila to these female characters. And now na it's now na parang we have an opportunity. Queer writers have the opportunity to to tell parang to not use a beard basically <laughs> for their stories. Um so by all means, they should jump in, di ba? Ayun. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Rachel? Uh, for me, uh, I think that when uh, it there is a tendency for for um, larger industries to treat uh, queer stories as a as a bandwagon that they need to get on, or like a, a trend that they need to hop on before it fades into oblivion but uh as gege said these stories have always been here uh and they're not going to go anywhere as long yeah. as um you know as long as uh queer people are here and uh and and marginalized in the way that we are uh we've made some crazy strides in the past couple of years but we have so so long to go uh yeah. before we're anywhere near where we need to be in terms of both representation and and acceptance but um I think that a series falls short and I, okay, this is like a hot take, but um, when it doesn't acknowledge the amount of social responsibility that media in general has, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can always, uh, yeah. It's like, uh, if, if, it, if it ends where it is, you know, you'll do a, 
uh, a female love scene and it'll be like great and then you leave it on the screen but then it's just isolated there and it's not um, either serving the story or um, I don't know like being a consulting a, a, an, a, a, a panel of people who aren't even like a who are in the queer community, it's just like uh, if you're not there to tell a great story that'll help people to either accept uh, or you know like uh, um, make them into better people. I don't know what you're doing telling stories. So yeah, I, I, I agree. Both show and I. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I sorry. Uh, um, I when the Natalie Hart came uh, issue came out recently, I was one of the <laughs> furious ones on Twitter because. <laughs> <laughs> as a hanap, as a mambabarda, tag dito. Um, um, it is un- it's a systemic problem. I know that we should cast, yeah. ideally cast queer people for queer roles. Um, but, but, I know too that there's a scarcity of queer, of working queer actors out there. And also, meron ding business as- aspect na kinoconsider ng mga stations because parang which actor can bring this story to a wider audience, right? May mga ganun silang right. considerations. And that's understandable. But I believe, now, yes, and it, uh, yes, uh, it's difficult to cast queer people for queer actors because some of them aren't even out and some of them aren't even working actors or parang not famous enough, et cetera, et cetera. But if we're going to cast straight people for these queer roles, actually, for, if we're going to cast someone, someone of privilege of, uh, na, for, for, for any story about the marginalized, about the oppressed, we should make sure that they are aligned with the politics of the story. That they align with the with the message of the story. Like, for example, you cannot cast a neo Nazi for a story about German concentration camp. Mm, true, <laughs> parang, true, true. So, para kasi 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 <laughs> there will always be a conversation because you know this. Sinabi nyo kanina that this podcast does not exist in a vacuum. Art does not exist in a vacuum, and there will always be conversations outside art. Uh, I'm going to share uh, the. Alfonso Manalastas, my best friend. Um, yeah. When, when we hit, uh, we initially wanted to cast openly uh, pure lahat san. Uh, we initially wanted to cast exclusively uh, we queer uh, out gay men, like openly gay men for for gaya sa pelikula. So we hit a roadblock because guess what? Sobrang even sa theater ang konti ng mga nag, nag- audition. Because what? they weren't ready yet to come out. Because oh. yeah, so, to audition for that role would mean out, brand yeah. yourself. Out, as oh, outing yeah. themselves. So, kaya nung kaya nung ano? Kaya nung um kaya nung naglabas na kami officially ng casting call. Tinanggal namin yung part na we're looking for queer actors. Sinabi lang namin we're looking for actors. And then pagdating na nung nung nila sa audition, cah namin tinanong if they were comfortable enough in sharing the soji with us. Anyway, so, so when we hit a roadblock during the GSP casting, my best friend sent me, my best friend is ever so sharp. I love him very much. I love you, Kumbal. Uh, sabi niya sa akin na, okay, tsaka yung economic aspect, Gege. Openly queer actors took that risk even if it means losing jobs. So give them jobs. At saka remember that the role of cinema isn't just to provide what the audience wants, but to also build taste and help define what is available for the audience to want. Every material has an important role wow. to play in redefining industry standards for what is palatable and marketable. The legacy of your work isn't confined within the sole merit of the finished product. It has to perform beyond aesthetic spaces. For example, yeah, it's a good series, but how did it serve the queer community beyond what is captured by the lens? So, Brilliant. ayun na nga. So, may laban sa laban, sa labas what lang palabas. Said. Exactly My, what he said. Alfonso Manalastas, you're not even here you're and you're getting born. the applause. I hate oh, you. No, no, no. <laughs> Very clever, guys. We'll applaud you later. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. yeah no, that's, that's really great. And that's really, you're right. Very, very sharp because we all, we always like talk about the conversation about characters on screen um, and what that does for representation. But only now is the conversation really turning to the more 
okay, but how is this affecting how people react in real life and what this does? Now I think it's a good time to read some comments from some of our um, customers. Hannah says, sometimes it's easy to conflate two women kissing as queer representation. Oh, there. <laughs> Sorry, you can't see it. <laughs> can't see it. Where oh, no, no, it won't go there. There's a queer representation when in reality, a lot of it has more to do with being sexualized and objectified for the male gaze than it does representation. In my opinion, this does the opposite for inclusivity and can do more harm than good. Um, yeah, that's was, my girl, another, Hannah. That's my girl. That reminds another, me of uh, no, Hannah's comment. Reminds me of what, what Gege was saying earlier about how male violence is always shown, but male love is not. The same way sexualized women are shown but like, even though it's masked as representation, it, like as she said, serves the male gaze more than it does represent the community. So I think yeah. there's a lot of like implications to gender norms that yeah. are practiced on the screen. And to Marco, add to that, Kai, mm -hmm. uh, actually, this pretty, yung sinabi ni Kai can be, uh, tagito, <laughs> sorry, mababalik mo siya dun sa Natalie Hart issue because I remember, na pe because her, diba she said, na parang, she wasn't comfortable parang falling hindi niya maano yung falling in love with a woman pero mm -hmm. kasi na, because Natalie Hart has appeared in media that portrayed cheating ah! and you know cat fighting basically parang women on women violence mm -hmm. so parang people the, the, there's sobrang justified yung backlash for me nung, nung sa kanya nun because oh nga naman because why don't you have a problem with you know parang so female on female violence but female on female love parang right 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 oh. okay um we have another um customer who says uh personally i don't feel mirrored by the representation by media about lgbt plus it's mostly full of stereotypes romanticizing and sexualizing which i don't uh hate the hint uh, it's just sad when it's mostly the narrative out there. Yeah, you know, I super agree with this. And I especially agree with it with um, sapphic content. Whenever it's two women leads, it's extremely sexualized. It's always about getting into bed um, with this woman, showing <laughs> yeah. see me love scenes. Um, one of my earlier, um, I, I had a period where I watched a lot of queer uh, lesbian films. And I think maybe like 95% of them had sex. Mm -hmm. I watched the local one, Rome and Juliet with Miley and Dizon. And that movie was steamy, you know. Um, but it's always about the women having sex. Yep. Right. Um, and just tastefully showing. Is it tasteful? You know, is it even with tasteful? regard to that question. With a sexy shoulder. I want to ask something to our guests real quick. Because like earlier, they've both shown that speaking the language, representing the speaker in a way that's authentic is really important for good representation and right. aligning the politics of the representative with who is being representative or, or yeah. who's being presented you're not yeah yeah, yeah. um with what with, the, with that past that that recent comment you also showed now you said that the, the, the responsibility goes beyond work on the screen diba right? so like in that sense parang but what what could you say about the like the, those films nowadays now yeah it's representing the lgbtq plus community but it's always like like mask gays or like they said yeah, steamy lesbians. Like mm. how what what do you say are this what what would you guys say are the steps towards representing, let's say, you know, like the not super pretty cool lesbian or like the, the, the kind of quirky dorky lesbian. A or, lesbian that's not based on a stereotype. Like yeah, exactly. I, I guess um, I wanted to ask this question a little bit later, but I think it would mm -hmm. fit here and it would be a good um, last question before we go to the break. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess we can like kind of boil down this question to how do you queer a narrative? Like how how to queer? Yeah, how, like queer is a <laughs> verb. You know, queer is a verb. Queering is an action. How and, do you respond to yeah, queer? Not narrative? every not every lesbian story, not every gay story is queer. If you know what I mean. Yes. So yeah, how do you queer a narrative or a how character? Do you responsibly queer a narrative. Mm -mm. Ah, uh, meron lang akong gustong i-address na uh, a few points that were brought up earlier. Um sure. yung sa kanina it's, if it's representation or fetishization uh, or sexualization. Uh yeah, I see uh, sobrang valid pala noon because uh, you know what uh, something that I also learned during the last year uh within the last year was um at dito, visibility isn't always representation. That's mm -hmm. number 1. 
visibility isn't always representation. Tapos, uh, ano nga yung sinabi kong second point? <laughs> Not enough vitamins. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ano nga yung second point? So sabi ko, uh, yung visibility versus and representation. And then something Kai mentioned Fetish- earlier. Um, Fetishization. Fetishization, uh, he said, I said something about responsibility goes beyond the screen. Aligning to politics. Did you read that? Ah, shoot! Speaking I forgot! Ah, baka mamaya. Being authentic. Baka may, uh, maybe later <laughs> it will come uh-huh. back. Okay. Well, I'm sure it will. Uh, how about Rachel? Oh, Rachel. Yes. How do you queer your character? How do, how do you queer your character? Oh, ah, alam ko na. How do you... <laughs> okay. Stereotypes. 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 Yung, yung bida niya sa the main character in Mamu, a mother too, is a queer, is a stereotype. The parloristang bakla. The parloristang bakla uh, stereotype. But then, what the, sh- what the, what the film did was to human, humanize this stereotype. And mm. pakita kung how is, parang, how do you turn this, the, the challenge will always be, it's okay to present stereotypes at first, but the challenge will always be for the creator to make sure that by the end of the uh, by the end of the series or the end of the movie that stereotype will become a full fledged human being so so yeah that's what i wanted to address anyway about queering the narrative with gaya sa pelikula ang sabi namin ay uh ang lagi nating sinasabi because love is uni- love is universal so definitely pa- kasi patterned after heterosexual romantic comedies kasi ang gaya sa pelikula So at first, parang, uh, there's nothing so queer about it. But then our love will also be always connected to our struggle as a minority, right? So, um, and I guess dun siya nagsistart na parang kapag when you start to, to peel yung layers ng characters mo, eventually makikita mo na doon kung nasan yung queer doon sa universal. Awesome. Rachel? Rachel, how do you queer? <laughs> How do I get? Let's make this queer. No, um, what's it called? <laughs> let's clear the air. Uh, let's <laughs> clear the air. Quick second. No, but uh, I mean to put it to put it really plainly. Uh, I mean, uh, I think Yaga said it way better than I than I will. But um, uh, I feel like as an actor, it's always um, playing. Uh, Earnest and human characters over playing stereotypes. Like I mean, okay, you start off. Let's go back to the birdcage, right? And it's the reason it's my favorite movie. Uh, was my favorite movie. Like um, they, it does start off with a parlorista gay and his um and his male lover director. Uh, and they are stereotypes. They're like really yeah. dead ass stereotypes. But you move on a, a deeper into the film, and you realize the story isn't revolved around you know um the fact that they're queer and that's the funny part and that's the joke and that's the conflict and that's everything it's not it's um it's so much more than that you realize that these characters are um their parents and their their <laughs> lovers and it's like ah what's up it's like um uh queering the narrative is making it so much more than just queer mm. i suppose is, is is that Uh, the quick so answer is the quick, the quick answer is make the gay man hold ice coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the quick answer is give him Spider-Man. ice coffee. Just kidding. What is a stereotype? <laughs> oh my God. Before we move on to our game for the night, we we did prepare a quick game for you guys. Um, so we're we're gonna hop on a, a weekly segment that we do. Uh, what's it called? Ask. Oh, oh, no, it's oh, called opening up. Opening but, up, right. But yeah, we're doing right, cool. something a little bit different today. We're doing something different all. today because we're not reading... We're um, plagiarizing a letter. No, we're not plagiarizing. <laughs> so um, usually what we do in opening up is we answer questions or share confessions from our customers. That's what we call our listeners because we have a lot of lo- new listeners tonight, I think. So just to explain, customers is what we call our community yes so um because we serve this ser- serve you we serve serve you serve service nicer than yes service. Uh, we serve you. 
So um, usually we have an anonymous form that I'll be leaving in the comments so you can ask us for next episodes. But uh, okay. recently my friend sent me this um, Rappler advice column. Yep. Uh, it's called Two Pronged. I'm pretty sure y'all are familiar or a lot of you might be familiar with this. It's basically Margie Holmes, a sex educator, and her husband. They uh -huh. both give different responses, okay. their own take on, uh, on a reader's uh, letter. So I wanted as like a little exercise for us because I thought this letter was very interesting. Um, so we're going to read that out. But don't worry, we'll be back to regular opening up next week. But I All just right. wanted to give this a try. So I'll summarize it because it's a very long letter. But basically, yeah. very, very long. Um, he is a 34-year-old man, married, has two kids. But he's worried he has a mental disorder because he gets turned on by the fantasy of sharing his wife with a stranger or friend. Bless his heart. He thinks he has a mental disorder because right? he has a fetish. <laughs> right? Because he has a fetish in so the pure. kink. But That's... the problem is now that, like, you know, he has had threesomes with his wife. He shared his wife now with his best friend. And now his wife wants to leave him for the best friend. And she says that they are in love and uh, they still have two kids. They are pretending to be married. Uh, but they have been separated for a year. But he wants to get her back. But also he's worried about this kink of his where he likes threesomes. He likes sharing his wife. He likes seeing other people have sex with his wife. And now he blames himself for the crumbling of his marriage. Well, Carl, sounds to me like you just got a free pass. <laughs> our resident uh, straight man. Our, our, our resident straight man, everybody. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, oh, my God, pards. Sounds to me like oh, Carl didn't Carl. the groundwork. Well, apparently, according to him, the only ground rule or like one of the ground rules that laid down was no love. Yeah, see, it sounds to me like they didn't lay what down. What do you mean? No love between whom? Between, between him you and, and your other sexual partners. That's a silly rule. But then she's already out of love with, with him, people. Deba. Hey, well, yeah. this was before. Before they fell out of love and when they were having threesomes, the rule was do not fall in love. That's a weird rule. It's like, hey, you know that one thing you have no control over? Yeah, control that shit. Control, yeah. You know what? What kind of fucking rule? Stop I mean, calling me out, Stop it! Stop. <laughs> no, he's right though. It, I, I mean, like as a as a non-monogamous person, um, a lot of us feel like we could protect ourselves by having a no emotions rule. Yeah. Uh, because it's safe. Yeah, sex is fine, but I think beyond that is not fine. But yeah. when you when you do have sex with someone, one there's like a there's hormones in play, especially if you're a mm -hmm. woman. The oxytocin is very very strong. You know, but also it brings you in, it, you're intimate with someone and it brings you closer to them. I'm sure they talk before and after having sex. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they're not right. just banging, you know, and they're already best friends with the husband. So they're in the same social circle. So they enjoy each other's company. It sounds to me like there was already something like deep seated going on there. And then you just welcomed temptation into your household. <laughs> like you did not clear this shit. First, yeah, dude. like, you know, or establishing the communication when this started happening because you don't yeah. just fall in love one day. It's yeah. a slow like, escalation. Which one of my friends could we fuck that you won't run off with, maybe? You know, like, mm, it sounds to me like there's something more going and on And I here. don't like, think he should blame his kink. I think, yeah. um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, but yeah. you don't blame your kink. But um, if if the woman left you, that means na meron na kayong problem prior to that. Na meron right. na kayong unaddressed problem Prior and to it that. was and brought to light because of what happened. Exactly. Yeah. But it's not yeah. because of what happened. <laughs> the yeah. call out, the call I feel, I feel no, like Carl and his wife should have like kind of, but I'm not the no emotions rule, the no love rule, because that's honestly impossible. Like setting up expectations to something that cannot be done is really bound for failure. Diba? So I think it could have been more like if it was like a like, a, like a, if you feel for him, can we talk about it? Can we, if you feel for him, can we discuss how to go about it rather than keep it like pent up inside you yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. running off with my best friend? Because if you have a no love rule and then the person's starting to fall in love, they're not going to tell you now because right. you have a no, a no, a no love terrifying. rule and they're breaking the rules. Right? Exactly. What, what, what can Carl do now, though, now that we've discussed how he could have done better? What could he do now? Like, now this that he doesn't, doesn't love him, dude. Question. It's yeah, well, okay. Then. If she doesn't love him, let her go, Carl. Let her go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you yeah. sound like you'd make a great single dad, man. Uh, push for it. But it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. But if you don't, if he doesn't love you, dude, you can't do anything about that anymore. I mean, you could always say, hey, let's try to work this out, you know, but then. Or, you know what? Think outside the box. 
Maybe, maybe uh, now, that, now that she's run off with your best friend, maybe it's time you try a polyamorous relationship. Maybe this could yes. work. She's your best friend, dude. This is like the best of both worlds. Your co-husband is your best friend. A person that you that ideally trust work. and love. That you could try this best exactly. situation. Yeah, I like a situation. Right? Yeah. And I, I really work. think that a lot it of- plays into your fetish of like having threesomes all the time. So now exactly. the threesome is not just in the bedroom, but it's in the rest of your life. Your life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And life. I think I, what I wanted to bring up in relation to this is really the concept of new relationship energy, which is a lot of, a lot of people um, who are trying mm -hmm. non-monogamous setups for the first time don't realize that new relationship energy, which y'all um, monogamous people might call the honeymoon period. It's powerful. It's very, very powerful. It's pretty much a drug. It's narcotic. And, you know, this happens with new people because you don't know them yet. There's zero baggage. Yep. There's, you, you've never fought. You know, you're in love. It's new. It's exciting. It makes you feel alive in a way that you've never felt. It, it haven't felt in a really long time. And that's very powerful. And, you know, maybe she's yeah. run off with him for that reason. But new relationship energy, honeymoon period, it ends. It ends and getting caught up in it is very, very dangerous. So, you know, cutting off a main relationship where you have two kids to mm. follow a honeymoon period that may or may not last. You never know. Um, maybe it's because, you you know, you don't really have any guidance in exploring non-monogamous relationships. We don't have any models. If queer people are struggling for proper visibility and representation, the, the non-monogamous community is also starving for that because, you know, there's zero role models. You yeah. don't know who to look up to. You don't know what to do. So, Ooh. yeah. Yes? Can I just say something real quick? Like, in, in relation to ethical non-monogamous couples, I have actually seen really, like, this cute representation in Rainbow Sunset. Um, oh! In Rainbow Sunset, like, the right? um He, like, her husband ran off with his best friend, but at the end of it, like she, 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 she was okay with it and she was happy with it. But then at the end of it, she took care of. I won't spoil it. Um, <laughs> was, sorry, I kind of spoiled it there. But then, anyway, I feel like that was ethical non-monogamy, just not stated. The same way, like you know how gay and lesbian relationships or characters were not really outwardly stated in the past. I feel we have that representation somehow, but it's just not stated. But yeah, awesome. It's a good movie. <laughs> yeah, so that was it for this week's opening up. Next week, we'll be back with uh, customer confessions and letters. I'm going to drop the link in the comments. So if you have a question you want us to answer, uh, we might pick it for the next uh, version, edition of yeah, this. for the next edition. We'll, next edition we of this might segment. try to help you. Yeah, we might try. We also might be mad. And, and in my case, <laughs> I might try to fuck up your life with really bad advice. Anti-advice. Anti -advice. <laughs> Just listen to this. <laughs> You've been warned. <laughs> All right. So for this part, I want us to, you know, just kind of like wind down a little bit. So we have a little fun game for y'alls. I'm going to call it gay or nay because I'm not very original with gay my or nay. Gay or nay. Ah, hi, gay or nay. <laughs> okay, gay or nay. Um, but basically, I'm going to go through a list of characters or movies or shows that have very famous or prominent that have representation yeah, representation of, uh, of queer, queer, queer characters and we just want you to say gay or nay and if you want to if you want to you can explain why you said gay or nay so you say gay if you think that the representation was good inspiring um it, it pro pro ah! responsible and then you say nay if you have issues with it <laughs> ah! Oh my gosh, what if I say the wrong thing? <laughs> you can't because there's a opinion. pretty girl. <laughs> okay, 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 fair. So I don't know some of these. I don't okay, know some of these. You can skip the ones so people don't know. All right. Well, uh, if, you know, if you don't know the character, you can you can skip it. All right. So we're going to start uh, very easy. We're going to ease you in. Him from <laughs> Powerpuff Girls. Gay or nay? Gay. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? Uh, okay. okay uh, <laughs> nay, because he was literally the embodiment of Satan and he was <laughs> the only gay in the show. But yay, because the fits, though, dude. The fits, the outfits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yay. For Fair stage answer. presence. Stage presence. Mm -hmm. Gay, gay. Gay or nay? Same, gay or nay. same gay you, Rachel. Okay, gay with an asterisk. Yeah. Let's say gay with an asterisk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. See below. See uh, below. Number two, 
Carol from Friends. Hmm. Who left Ross for her lesbian lover, Susan. A little contentious because the, the way they treat Carol on the show is one thing, but the way Carol treats herself and the way she holds her, uh, carries herself yes. throughout the show is another. Yeah. So Carol, gay or nay? Uh. <laughs> gay, because <That's... laughs> she left Ross. Yes, the worst man I would man have on left Ross too, man. I would have left Ross too. That is, I, you know what? She and her partner were like the best. They were so nice. Like yeah, the they really were. And Ross was absolutely the worst. So thank you. Yeah, he was, but, he um, was. Who would want him to be happy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so <laughs> mad that he gay. ended up with Rachel. Hey, are you, are you gay or nay for, for Carol? Rachel, you deserve better, girl. Gay, gay. Gay, gay. All right. gay. Next, here's a really popular character. Gained a lot of popularity maybe a couple of years back. Um, Garnet from Steven Universe. Gay. I have not seen the show. She's no, not. She is, uh, she is a, a, a fusion, and she is voiced by none other than Estelle of American Boy fame, gay or nay. Gay. It's okay if you don't know her. Gay. She's so gay. She's already gay. I mean, I can see it. But yeah, I mean, like, uh, I have not seen the show. I have to watch the show. <laughs> they were literally the first lesbian wedding on the was it Nickelodeon? <laughs> yeah. Cartoon Network. Yeah, Car Cartoon Network. Okay, yeah. I think it was literally the first lesbian wedding on Cartoon Network. No yeah. way. Yeah. Wilden. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Wilden, Wilden. Pig with no pants on for years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, next one, also kind of recent. If you guys watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Holt. Captain Raymond, Cap Captain Raymond Holt, Peralta. <laughs> nay. Love him. Nay? All right. Wait, we heard a nay, so. We heard a nay. We heard Why a Why is it nay? nay? I mean, Okay, ang sagot ko ay ni because yes, he's a strong black man who happens to be gay, but he is still a cop. Including Brooklyn Nine-Nine. All cops are assholes. All right, what about you, Rachel? Gay or nay? No, what? I can't change my answer, dude. All I, I was blinded by the the by the charm. The cute little... <laughs> <laughs> the charm. He's very charming, though. Yeah, he's very charming. But the cute little cute. wine parties and the husbands. I like that bit. But you know, you're right. A cab, dude. True. A cab. <laughs> the pants are now open. A cab. Let's just forget that their relationship is one of the best representations of gay relationships on television. <laughs> All cops are <laughs> bastards. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> right, yeah, right. It's good. Though. I do love their yeah. relationship. Uh, they're they're two yeah. weird gay people together. Freddie. Okay, this one's interesting because it's based on a real person. Yes. Right. But what about Freddie Mercury in? Bohemian Rhapsody. So gay Malik or nay. Version, gay, nay, nay, nay. 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 But it wasn't. It wasn't Rami's fault. It wasn't Rami's fault. Not Rami's nay. fault, definitely. It's the writing's fault. Yes, uh, sir. So I'm talking. What was about. wrong with it? Erased oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> so we erased it. it. But uh, uh, minimize natin yung queerness niya as much as possible. Yeah, that was such a big part of him, though, and his yeah, life. Yeah, I know. But... I know. Uh, I love you, Hollywood. All right, next one, maybe to make up for that one, Electra in Pose. Yay, gay. I have to watch. I have to watch. I have to watch that still. I'm so sorry. Oh Please don't murder me. me too. All right, no, gay. And I think we all know gay. why because Electra is the absolute queen. All right, this yeah. one's going to be very controversial. I can't even remember the name of his character. James Corden in Prom. <laughs> Nay! Straight up, it's like James Corden. Yeah, James Corden James and Prom. Right. Whatever his character was. James because... Corden everywhere. Nay. <laughs> Nay, dude. That's Honestly, Nay. Same. very Except much same. Except for James though. Corden and Cats, I felt like that was a very <laughs> fitting role for him. Yeah, James Corden. James Corden and Cats. Yay! But Cats as a movie, Nay. movie is more Nay. Yeah. For me, mm. Yay, because it's hilarious. <laughs> As a movie, remember, it's very we watched fun to watch all drunk. together, dude. It was the we best did. movie on the planet. Like, <laughs> you can't even deny we all had a good man, time. We we Filigo, Filigo history <laughs> will eventually redeem Cats, the movie. I feel yeah, like it will. History it will, will eventually. It'll be a cult classic. It's enjoyable. It will be like the next, uh, the room. Then, yeah. Yes. yeah. Probably, yeah. except for Hollywood backing, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I know what you guys are talking about. I think it was a brilliant film. I think it was very well made. I think the geography, the writing, Taylor Swift, you know, it was great. The editing, the CGI was just so on point. 
All right, this next one, Simon from Love Simon. I have not. I'm not seeing that. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. okay. Gainerman, okay. to be fair. Gainerman. All right. All right. Okay. Gainerman. So this one, maybe, um, Rachel, you've seen. I would be so disappointed if you haven't. Rosamund okay. Pike and I Care A Lot. I haven't seen I Care A Lot. How did you not watch it immediately? Give me I a know, I, I'm sorry. I've been, so, I've been so busy recently. <laughs> That's a recent one, right? That yeah, it came out on Netflix like that's maybe a why, month ago. That's Hi, why. Have you seen? So I'm supposed to watch it. We were supposed to watch it last night, and then Zara wanted to watch it together. So I was like, okay, I'll wait. <laughs> How about you, Gaga? Have you seen it? No, but yay, because Rosamund Pike. Fair. Yeah, that's dude. always the answer. So no to James Corden. <laughs> Nay to James Corden. We saved, uh, we saved number 10 for last because we felt that you guys might have a lot to say about number 10. All right, uh, who's number 10? Number 10. Korra, the Avatar from The Legend of Korra, gay or nay? And She's why gay. Gay. Am I gay? <laughs> gay. <laughs> and gay why, why gay? Yeah, why gay? Why do we all love Korra as gay? <laughs> if you had to pick only one of these characters, if, if you had to kill all nine of them and only one would survive, why would it be Korra? <laughs> because she's the avatar. <laughs> she's stronger than any of them. She's got great uh, biceps, also. <laughs> does she's my inspiration, dude? I need. I want. I want biceps like her. No, I she's so you cool. have biceps like hers, Rich. <laughs> no. I feel like I feel like sobrang ano unwarranted and called for ng hate for Cora. Kasi hodang hindi siya kasi galing ni Ang. Because in the first place, parang how do you become? Parang pinalaki siya to, parang to play this part that people don't seem to need as much anymore. Mm. And parang nagbago na yung mundo na ginagalawa nila. So parang is there really a, truly a need for the avatar pa in the first place? So, <laughs> wala. Basa, marami lang sa kanya. Basa, basa gay si Cora. Yeah. Totally. And I, I just really, oh, okay, this is not related to the gay part, but I do love how Cora tried to tackle more complex political True. dynamics. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody right. set the stage in um, the, the, or, the original series, and then in this one, they want to explore something deeper, especially because the audience is a lot older. And I'm so glad they got off Nickelodeon because I don't know if they oh. would have been able to show that kiss. Yeah. At the oh, end. also, also, That's also, another right. thing that I love about Cora that the reason why Cora is gay and yay because it's it's very rare that we see queer people presented in the media in whose struggles are not connected to his to their queerness. Yeah, because true. in Korra, her queerness, her love for Asami is the reprieve. It's not the problem. You know, it's not a love Simon thing. Now, oh my God, I love Asami. I'm no longer going to be qualified to be the avatar. No, but oh my God, the world is shit. And now I'm done fixing it. Now I can go to the spirit world with the woman I love. That's beautiful. Sana Perfect. all parts. I want to go to the spirit world and I love her. Come on, let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> You'll meet your Cora one day. <laughs> You'll, be your own Cora. You'll be your own Cora. Oh, no, yeah. God. But Asami is a billionaire, this. so I don't know. Former. <laughs> a former billionaire. Right, right, right. She was a class trader <sighs> to the billionaire, <laughs> so it worked and out. Class trader, she, class trader, she, so yeah, yeah, so yeah, thank true. you, Asami, for betraying your <laughs> own she father. Also, yeah, she also turned in her dad, dude. So, like, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Class trader. Spoilers for, so, for like, a show that's been out for several yeah. years. <laughs> so. And Mako became a cop, so no. Yeah. Ah. Mako. Ah. 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 In there were a lot of bastards in that Fucking place Paul Blart. Fuck Paul Blart. <laughs> oh, God, <some> bastards. <laughs> so, you know what? Thank you so much, Gaga and Rachel. We learned so much. And I hope everyone listening learned uh, just as much as we did. And we had so much fun talking to you. Now Hi. I'm like thinking of different ways to get you back onto the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Have us back. Have us back. Have I'm us in back. an open relationship with my boyfriend for six years now. So <gasps> we can talk about that. Let's do that. Yeah. Oh and Rachel, gosh. you can How tell us about your life. 
<laughs> Only if you want to. So uh, <laughs> I want to know what your biggest uh, or like most important takeaway from tonight's episode, or if there's like one last thing that you want to absolutely stress to the people listening, um, what would it be? Let's start with uh, Gege. Um, Sharon, um, you know, it's been said over and over, but art does not exist in a vacuum. And it's not mm-hmm. enough that, yun yan, na parang you, uh, you make good art. But there will always be discussions and movements after you release whatever it, after you give birth to whatever it is that you created. And I think uh, if, if, if our duty as an artist is to present these truths, and I believe that our duty as people and as citizens of this country is to show up when, when you know, when the changes, na, when the discussions and the changes and the movement na, na, na connected to our art uh, finally start. And usually it's in the streets, it's outside, it's not, you know, it's not within social media. It's not within, it's not within aesthetic spaces nga, ika nga ni Alfonso. And yeah, show up. Awesome. Rachel? Show mm. up! That's what I'm talking about. Um, I think for me, it would be uh, that stories are incredibly powerful and representation in media is mm, something that uh, we still have a lot to go up on in terms of, uh, what's it called, in terms of improvement. But uh, I think that telling great stories uh, with a whole lot of love is a good start. But that's it. It's a start. So Yes. Awesome. So then you want to go? I just enjoyed uh, hearing about uh, everyone's involvement and experience in, in telling queer stories. And now I think I have a better understanding of what to look for what to, to I, I sort of have a better litmus test in my head now for what is exploitative and what is inclusive. Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. It's to keep me more like critical with what you're watching. Yeah. 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 I mean, does it, are, are, are we, are we serving a, a purpose here or are we just being indulgent? Are we doing it for the sake of, right? Yeah. All right. Kai. For me, it would have to be that representation, um, goes way beyond the screen that you know it's in telling these stories it does it's not just the end product that like you know that is important it's also the method the process of what you do to get to the end product and mm-hmm. i think like as um as our guests are producers of media and as we are consumers of media we all have the responsibility to do the work as what as what gege said it starts um, you have to show up, and the show up also means to consume and to produce media that is tr- telling the truth in terms of queer representation. Awesome! I guess also watch first- Disclosure on Netflix. Sorry, I forgot. Yes. <laughs> that is okay. a great, great documentary. Watch so, Disclosure um, on Netflix. Yeah. I guess my, the thing that really stood out to me tonight is how. Uh, media is an especially it's it's an economics issue. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, yeah. uh, mm. It's a business. It's a business. And mm. that business has shut out queer creators and queer stories for so long because there was no market. And now that there is a market and it's some a little bit more democratized, not still available to everyone who wants to create a story, but more people are able to tell their stories now, especially with online platforms. So one of the best ways I think that we can give justice to queer narratives is by putting queer people in front and behind the screen. Allowing queer people mm. to tell the stories they want to tell, make them the director, the producers, you mm. know, the, involved, the crew, the yeah. crew, especially because, you know, queering happens at every stage, set design, costume, all of that, you know, True. so True. you give True. people jobs and you, when you give them jobs, you allow them, you know, to tell what they want to tell and also support them because all of us, I'm sure would love to create amazing art, but a lot of us don't have the time or money to do so. So for the people who can, um, give them jobs. Speaking, give them opportunities. Speaking of supporting people, you guys can support us on our coffee. <laughs> and uh, you can support us by supporting the companies that support us and by patronizing the people one who sponsor the, our episodes. One of the, yeah, that's the lead character. Um, give them jobs. Oh, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Nice. Okay, so, so yeah. Uh, so you can support us on our, on our coffee. And uh, you can also join us on our Discord where 
we we converse with people. Yes, we we talk all the time on the Discord. Um, if you want to catch us all, uh, outside of the episode, uh, that is the best place to do so. We just hang out. You can ask us questions and talk to other people in the now open community. Yep. Yeah, and if you want to check out our past episodes, uh, if if you enjoyed what you heard today and want to check out our past episodes, you can check it out on Facebook. That's uh, also on YouTube. And we are also on Spotify. We recently just uploaded up to the 18th episode. Really? On Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. And we are working our way back up towards uh, t- towards the, the present episode. more recent episodes. Yeah, so don't worry. We'll be updating that a lot more. And don't worry. If you're listening from the very start, don't get discouraged. The audio quality does, in fact, get better. So does our host. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we learned as we went along. So please bear with us for the first, like, 10 episodes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? I want to say thank you so much to our guests. Um, you made this episode what it was. You, you were really the ones who... Gave us so much insight, and I hope everyone else uh, listening um, also got something from what they learned for me tonight. So, would you like to promote anything? Um, your personal socials, any upcoming projects? Um, Coats is a new single. Go, Coats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, we're working out the Spotify bugs. Uh, but yeah, if you'd like to listen to my music, please do check out Coats on Spotify. Uh, or just follow me on Instagram because that's where all of the newest links will be posted. So please do follow me on Instagram at Theat Rachel. So it's like theatrical, but Theat Rachel because I'm witty. That's and, what uh, yeah. Okay. Theat- <laughs> and it's Theat- 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 Rachel. <laughs> right? Right? I don't post stuff on Facebook. So it's just Coats, my last name, and then stuff uh, if you want to check out. All the stuff that I've been quotes doing. Quotes to live by. Like, quotes to live by. <laughs> I'm getting better quotes to live by. Oh, my God. Oh, no. So, Gaga, oh, you don't God. want to promote? That's cool. I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I will promote. I'm well I'm going to podcast every Mondays and Thursdays. And I also have a podcast where I'm going to talk about what I'm doing because I'm going to read old journal. Oh, my God. Old journal ah! entries. I, I love that. And then I criticize so. my own writing. So... Uh, it's called Wag Tong Makakalabas. Oh, oh, it's cheaper than therapy. therapy. <laughs> so, yeah, I look oh forward my gosh. to listening to that. I will absolutely binge all of that in one afternoon as I'm washing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yun lang. Yun lang muna. <laughs> all right, everyone. That was our episode for tonight's edition of Now Open, bringing queer stories to life. But don't worry, we will be back next Tuesday, same time and same place for our... 30th episode. Can you believe it? We have We've made, made it to 30 episodes. God. I can't believe you people are still We are yeah. aging gracefully. Yes. So if you want to catch us, we do a special episode every 10th episode. So um, next week, we're going to be streaming a role-playing game called One Night Stand with my friend and streamer, Erica. Um, so join us next week as we try to make the right choices for this the is character. a sex game, right? Yeah. This is a, we're gonna be fucking in the game, right? No, you've you've just fucked. That, that's we've just finished. Uh, we start <laughs> after the fun part ends. We start the game after the fun part ends. Well, well, you know what? We'll Damn. see what the game brings us. There might be more fun parts if we choose okay. the right. All if right. we make the right choices, it could be a second night stand. So let us teach or you, you can just go home and eat cereal and regret those decisions. That's always the right choice. <laughs> we'll be eating cereal during the podcast because we'll regret everything. So if you want to watch that, uh, make sure to tune in next week, yes. 9 p.m. Uh, but after that, we'll be back to our regular program of extremely educational. educational. <laughs> I like how we had to scramble for we an were adjective. Like, um, right how do we describe extremely it? Extremely educational program. <laughs> It's slightly <laughs> titillating program <laughs> now open. So yeah, we hope like we had a lot of amazing listeners, uh, a lot of new listeners tonight. I just want to go down to the comments and say yeah. goodbye to everybody who joined us tonight and commented. So if you want to catch up, make sure to leave a comment now. So we got Nick, Mackie, Mackie, Mother welcome, Trisha. Mackie, welcome to the now open family. Welcome. <laughs> yes, welcome now open. Oh my Jesus. gosh. <laughs> Fine person. Thank yeah. you so much, Maggie. Um, Nikki, Essa, uh, Wilma, Justin, Robes, Marco, Zar. uh, Zar's back, of course. Ariane, Ariane, uh, Pia, Hannah, and Ange, Sherry Bell, another Trisha. We should form a band. 
Um, Sin. Sin. Shin. Um, who else we got? Gui. Gui is here. Unless it's Guy. Uh, maybe. Yeah. And Erica, who we are yeah. streaming with. Uh, next week is here as well. Eric, what up, Erica? Ed, uh, Isa, and everybody else. Ben, we did not oh my God! There's so many so people. Oh, you were ridiculous. So Ings. This is the longest Thank goodbye so we've much. ever this done. This is also the most we've ever had. Sky the and the Roy. Puto so, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we were just reading names and welcome back again. Even though we're about to sign off, but yeah, thank you, everyone who listened. This is probably the most number of listeners we've had. And it is. We, we really hope you stick around and listen to our past episodes and join the community in the future because we'd love to have you. We're so excited. All right, everybody, that's it for tonight. And see you when we next open. Woo! Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Bye, everybody.